there are a lot of different styles of electronic music and all these different styles of electronic music have their own set of rules which you should follow in order to work at it successfully. There is however one style that I think is a little bit more forgiving. How to make better progressive house music tracks live. That's going to be today's video. Are you ready? Let's go do it right now. Hey and welcome, I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and da -da -da -da, you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video, I will tell you about Patreon and Discord and I will tell you on the development in the mixer section, in the mixer development level, you know what I mean. There is a lot of technical stuff that goes into music production. There's a lot of tedious technical stuff that goes into connecting synthesizers and then making music and then performing with it live. So that's three things that can horribly go wrong. Not, not to worry though, if you follow simple set rules, it's easier to get to one point. And the fun of dollars producing is that it's less predictable. Now, within that less predictable set, uh, kind of vibe with electronic music still there are rules to follow right with house music it needs to be around harmonies it needs about bass lines that really revolve with techno it has to be a certain sound and it needs to sound a certain way rumble kicks and you know if you get it wrong it doesn't work hard style if the kick doesn't punch enough you know, there's so many rules you have to follow to make a convincing kind of vibe now this also applies to progressive house but not so much in that sense hence the word progressive house progressive meaning forward thinking so today it's going to be about progressive house but let's dive a little bit deeper into the matter shall we i have actually layered four different kinds of low end with two 303 bass lines all on top of each other because i wanted the bottom end of the track to be a little bit more of a drive-in organic kind of flow so now this means that that little segment that i've niched myself into it's gonna get congested pretty quickly it's still possible and this is what you should take away from this video how to layer your sounds in a way that progressive house does the trick and then you can just stick a few elements over the top and that should work so that's pretty much what we're going to do i've got my culprits here um, and then i've got the akai set up so there's a lot of stuff that can work um, and will work but it takes a certain way of thinking a certain mindset and a certain approach approach to get it going now if you are ready I will show you on how I use my drums I built my drums around a little bit of a vintage kind of vibe because I wanted to go in old school which means the 808 303 that kind of vibe think Kraftwerk think African Mambada and built the whole um, rest of the drums around that and then migrating from that onwards to bass and 303 and then you know you know the, that's what we're going to do so if you're ready fasten your seat belts buckle up Hang on tight, because we're in for a ride. Let's go to the live set, let's make it work. Shall we? Let's go. All right, gang, <clears throat> so welcome. Now, this is how we're going to do it. Do I need this? No, Whoa, get out of here. Okay, don't need that, don't need that. On my bench, I've got the mini tower. I've got a TP-Link 3.0 seven port hub, which is very important a thing because when you work with Nakai MPC Live, you might as well just like stick a hub in there in order to get the USB MIDI things going. One problem is the Korg Mini Log XD because once I send USB MIDI to the Akai, the multi clock goes haywire, goes all over the shop. You'll see varies between 20 and 250 BPM, which is not ideal for dancing. Very interesting sounds, but not if you want to make a tune. So that is going via five. Uh, pin din old school midi then why is the multi clock here the multi clock here is because certain boxes that i use for this live progressive house thing that i want to do need to get their own clock this thing gets clocked it's the master clock it can send out clock to everything else but in order to make sure that this doesn't screw up as it did i mean previous before recording this it froze up i had to just like redo the whole thing again so that's why i tend to give different things if they've got their own sequencer their own midi clock of their own clock signal so there's three of those on the desk here's the black box the tenton music black box is a sample player 
And let's enable that because it's going into the Akai. So I'm using the Akai as a mixer so that this doesn't need to go on a, a DM12 minus mixer that I got sitting right here. Okay, the Minotaur is my bass uh, player. I look at this as an electronic orchestra, right? Especially with Progressive House. What I love about this genre is that it's all over the place, basically. It can be whatever, it can do whatever. It is um, a blend between different things. Today, I want to go in a little bit more retro. So I've got this 80s kind of loop consisting of 808 drums that comes from here, which really works neatly in the bottom end of the frequency spectrum. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll play you my uh, loop in a second. Mini Log XD here for the chords. The um, subsequent 37 is also here for to play leads or whatever. And then two outputs out of Yakai go into the acid box because I'm thinking of a hard floor kind of vibe. Hard floor, if you don't know the band, they used to re release a lot of stuff on uh, Hard House Records even. And they were very renowned for using 303s as their driving baseline. So I will build this track around a solid hybrid baseline consisting of three elements. Two of which are going to be 303s, one sample, one TB03, and then there's another, um, then some military is going to just complement that in the bottom end. Hope you're still following. All right, cool. Now the beats that I have, I've got a vocal here. Let's see the, the 303 is here. Let's mute that. The bass, let's mute that and let's start with what I have. So I've got a simple groove. Right, so I can hear that my um, brakes are already playing. Cool. Now, this is what I have. Boom, clap, boom, blah. Simple house beat, right? Shaker going on, kick going on. The kick's got enough low end to really help uh, anyone out. But what I do is I will stick the kick on a separate uh, channel because you need to have control over it, especially with progressive house. With levels, things might vary. So you can hear my kick and the clap for some reason. I need just to sort it out, but it's coming out of this green fader right here. So I can, bam, flick it easily. I gain stage the whole thing so that everything can go completely flying up the, the desk. So I don't have to mix it like this and, you know, be meticulous with what I want to do because I don't want to stand there looking like a lab scientist. I want to just perform, which is what we're doing. Now, this is the groove, right? That's the kick separately. The rest of it is the stereo that comes from here. So these two faders close to each other is what making me uh, determine whether you hear drums, yes or no, cool. This green fader is my mini tar bass line. A progressive house bass always starts on the afterbeat, most of them. I mean, with melodic techno, everything starts on the one. You got this boom, you know how Button starts on the one and makes an arpeggio out of this bass line in the middle of his uh, sequence. I will go in old school and just play that old school. That 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 sounds something like this. Uh, you don't get it more prog house than a bass line that plays this. So I went in for the straight and in your face kind of but I'm from now <clears throat> this baseline leaves a lot of what am I saying this also starts on the one but you know what I mean it's a little more that's because I played that one note there as well usually I can say like I will go in and say this bass that goes over 16 beats can even go over four beats so making myself a little bit easier right so that if I'm deleting the first note, then you get what I was saying. So let's delete the first note and listen to what happens right there. This is usually how, this is also a standard kind of, you know, prog house bass liner, which is cool because you got more space for different things. But because I think I want to make a little bit more of a more peak time driving kind of track, I will place more. So yeah, as I said, not starting on the one. What am I talking about? Okay, so that's what we got right here, right? Now, I've got an acid baseline that I chopped up. I have sliced it already because I'm not a fan of the, um, in here, three, three, of the warping. The warping 
um, it's a time stretching on the MPC. I mean, even though with the updates it got better, it's still not ideal. So what I'll do is I'll chop my samples up. So as you can see, you see different parts flying around and playing. And it's always playing different um, segments of this thing. So what happens if we're going to lower our baseline and listen to what we have? I've got it going out of channel three and four and going into the acid box three, acid box three. So I'll open up the filter and then you get this. And the acid box three goes into the digital, digital delay DD7, right? That's now off. And then, so together with the bass line, it starts to sound like this. And I've got my nice um, uh, in level here so I can drive this thing as well. And what happens is that the, this bass line and this bass line get glued together like boom, 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 boom. So there's a bit of a crazy floor kind of feeling. Boom. This thing will drone you out in the club, which is cool. So now this is already an infinite loop for me. Infinite loops are amazing. But not getting ahead of ourselves, so open this up, you know? So you get a little bit of the transients. Keep it on 12 o'clock. Before I go there, I'm gonna take out both these uh, bass lines, go back to the drums, and then I'm gonna go to what I told you about this retro vibe, because this is cool, but I need something of a retro kind of flavor. So what I've got is this. And I can initially hear that the bass drum here needs to be pitched up. I think, there you go. If I'm not mistaken. Solo, listen to what I have, go out. Nah, nice. So now there's another low end frequency content thing that's going to help the subwoofer in the club out because what I want is this thing to really migrate and morph and work. Now I don't, as you can see, mix anything on the desk. I don't even mix anything inside of this Akai. I just level it. So I'm looking for sounds that can be great sounding out of the box. So it's more to do with level. So if would, I was to go in and look at what I did with this thing, let's put it in solo. Let's go out here, menu, and then we'll go to our pad mixer. You can see, I think I need to lower this uh, 909 or this 808 snare considerably. Now it is a loop that plays this. I chopped it up and I played the exact same pattern. But obviously, since you chopped up your loop, you can now be very, um, yeah, uh, cool and just make all kinds of different variations if you want to. Um, for now, I think that this is cool. Yeah. I think even the snare can go down a little bit more, but you know, I think for now it's cool where it is. Now, if I got a crash, not yet. I don't know what's happening. Oh, but yeah, because it's not playing. All right, so let's play the acid box. There you go. That's the acid box here. It's also is getting a signal from the clock. So I don't want to rely on MIDI chains too much if I've got this multi-clock sitting here and I can feed different um, boxes, different things. Very important because if a machine has its own sequencer, it's best to just make sure that you can just like feed it its own clock signal. I've had it happen that my Akai froze up mid set, so I was very happy to just like play uh, a 909 drum computer, which I had sitting there at the time, and a 303, um, and then just like solve the problem. Nobody knew what was going on. Play with the filters, and by the time I had solved the Akai problem, I could just turn it on, and it went. Now, I've got this going, this going, this is the mini tower. I'm going to take off a little bit of the envelope generation so that the sound doesn't stay that percussive. It is very... Now this envelope generation knob is very powerful when it comes to this sound because here it's more of a... You can always hear the sound and if I turn it up and I'm talking about 2 o'clock here, right? So if you're looking at a the clock then you know where the dial is on the mini tower. Um, and if you follow this channel you know about my diode clip, clipper cable. This thing goes through the diode clipper cables, which means that if I'm not feeding the cable too much 
gain or amplitude, I should say. It doesn't crush the sound that much, but it will stand out. As I said, as I don't mix stuff, um, um, you need to have your sounds contain character in order for them to stand out, right? So, okay. Now, this is what envelope generation does. Here you can hear that it starts to become a little bit more of that bite. That's what I would suggest you should uh, focus on when you listen to what that diode clipper cable does. It's a little bit more bite, which is cool. But uh, this thing also masks the 808 kick drum, right? So if this is on, then you won't focus as much on the 808 kick, which also does a part in terms of the low end. Okay, well, that's cool. Now we're going to go for sound number three in that same category. So the kick drum of the 808 um, electro beat is pitched. The mini tower is sitting where it sits. Now we're going to add the acid line that we've got here. And everything needs to be just gelled together. Now there is some modulation on there. Let's take it off because now we've got a fluctuating sound and more sounds. We need to focus on getting the sound steady first. From the minute we know where we get, we get up, um, basically set our levels, we will set it and forget it. Now I'm trying to make a foundation of migrating morphing sounds, especially in the low end, because that's where I think Progressive House is, in my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been very successful making track, tracks that really fed the speakers and really took off in that way. And then you get to CIA your way around your set a bit, so you're not so drastically like introducing different things. It's very much like, um, let's add a little bit of this. Like, see, and a lot of stuff just keeps going there now. A lot of stuff just happens and it goes in a certain direction. Everything moves, migrates, it keeps doing its thing, which is cool. So you can really up to go like, okay, take out the kick and then enter the next sound into the room, basically. Now what I would do is to complete my whole bass journey is add a three or three line. This is going to be a little bit more of a lead line, but if I play around with the tuning, then obviously I can also bury this within the uh, bass um, formation sounds that I have right now. This is a line that I have already made. Let's take this one out. Now, this is old school, you know what I mean? So this is the foundation of the whole thing. A bit of a craft work kind of approach, not per se saying that I'm craft work, but you understand what I mean, right? That old school vibe, that Africa Mabata sound, that's going to be my backbone of the sound where I want to take it. Now in, to complete this, thank heavens on the TB03, which doesn't sound anything like a 303. I love the overdrive to just give a little bit of character to the sound, right? Yep, there you go. Nice, so now this one is sitting on top of this. I'm going to move my filter and see if I can put this layer underneath this sound so that they blend a little bit more, cross over, right? Like that. Yeah, I'm liking that, man. Come on, what's not to like here, right? Cool. So, and the thing is, if you um, place the sounds in a logical kind of fashion, if you just enter them into the room or into your set logically, people will know what to focus on, right? So. If you just play this to people, like, what do you think of this track? The people are going to go like, yeah, what am I, what am I following? Am I following uh, this sound? Am I following the 303 sound that's here? Am I following this, uh, this bass line sound? I don't know what's happening, you know? So you need to know where your sounds are going most of the time. Right, okay, so the hierarchy is, this one can go down a little bit. So you got your sub low frequency content here. Bum, 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 bum. On top of that goes the first acid line. And on top of that goes the second acid line. Bam, wah, bam. Wah, wah, bam. Nice. Now that we have that, I think it's time for some pads, right? So I will go to the Minilog XD, 
and see what I have. I've made these sounds uh, before. I have a lot of the sound design on this machine as well. So, okay. Now, since this is all ostinato, staying on the same sort of um, uh, root note, the variation has to come from chords that I'm going to play on top of this, right? Which is what I'm going to um, do now. So I can either this being the root note here. I can fill up the whole sort of spectrum with sounds, but I need to just like uh, invoke a little bit of drama maybe. So I'm gonna take the kick out, lower this, have this be a little bit percussive. So if I've got my reso up and my envelope up uh, quite considerably, lowering the cutoff frequency would make it more of a percussive sound. This goes down again, envelope generation. a little bit of room for what's to come next, which I don't even know what it is. But let's see what we can do. Start here. Open the filter up a little bit. Oh, that sounds okay. Let's see what we can do. I think I like the end. I always have to experiment. Keep it simple, you idiot! Let's see what happens. Okay, these two need to go. Let's uh, take them out. Zoom in. What's the echo? There's a bass line on this. I'm play my bass line here. Did you record it? Yes, you recorded it. But a little bit too high, so I'm going to transpose them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, am I there? There you go. So play around with the filter here. Yeah, so you now you get your initial drop already, right? Open up this one. I'm liking this. Okay, so while I'm at it, I'm gonna get ahead of myself. I will also uh, blanket this a little bit, which means that I'm lowering the filter, and I'm going to look at, okay, this subsequent uh, 37 sitting right here, smiling at me, gagging to be used. So I'm thinking like, okay, what else have we got? Sometimes this thing hangs, I don't know why. Yeah, let's play something of a lead. Let's see if that works. I'm not sure. No, probably not. Okay, let's do it again. Hmm. Okay, this can be done better. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Take it off. Fill the filter. And record straight in like. Oh, 
Yeah, that'll be cool, maybe. Let's see what it sounds like. Two, three, and... Play around with the black shadow I got in here. Nice. Okay, open up. Yep, go in here, open up the meal log. One, two, three, four, five. Try to bring it in. Pick out. Three, four, five, six. Come. Just doing it off the top of my head, usually I would just go in and think like, okay, is this something that I like? Yeah, let's mute it now. And then you've got blankets that you can work with, layers of sounds that you would like to use. Nice one. Take out the cork. What would happen if we stick this 303 also in the rest of our bass? Let's do that. So, taking out the mini tar, if you can hear, will give it that 303 vibe, which is cool. This is what I want. I don't want to be standing there naked or nude or whatever. Um, you can hear that the, if I lower all the sounds, you will always hear that the 808 kick is going to take over. So the first thing I would do is build on top of that, right? So this goes in. And I, re I keep re uh, looking at where the levels go. So for Prog House, you want to be in a more of some sort of flow state of mind. So slow and easy wins the race, which means that on this first asset line, the sweet spot starts to be around here. Here you can hear it on 12 o'clock. Here you got just sub low, right? So then you play around with the um, in level. And this thing has got some sort of a rhythmic element to it also. So where this is more of a tap to cup, tap to cup, tap to cup. This gives a little bit more of, a, of an accent, right? So this is more dancing. Hey. Go, huh, ch yeah, huh, huh. This starts to drive your groove forth. So keep that in mind that once this is going, it is invoking a little bit more speed on the on the track. People feel like, oh, whoa, we're going to the next level. So and this is also the accent of this groove thing here. Bam, bam. And there's a call and response between those two things, the TBO3, has this on the first of the measure, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then this is on the second of the measure, three, three, four, three, four, one, two, bam, bam, two, bam, bam. so there you go, call and response, always very important to keep, keep your track uh, going and driving, obviously, so yeah, I'm getting into the zone with uh, this, yes, Ooh. Cool. Two, three, four. Drive. Cool. Kick out atmosphere in with the XD.
ici. Nice one. Kick in. And if you have a vocal, you got a vocalist, you can even go even crazier. Kick out. Check this out. Added that also. Yep, that's the pitch. I'd like to welcome Saki Maki, Crypto Hacker, Theo Sin, Gabi of Hell, Thomas Vickers, Jason Searle, and John Franklin as this week's patrons. That's a lot. And that's partly due to uh, the video on base arpeggios that went viral a few weeks ago. I really didn't think that that was going to happen, but I mean, it racked up so many. Um, uh, uh, views and uh, subs. That's about like 200. What was it? 2,500 new subs in a few days. So yeah, that was really cool. So welcome, all you new subscribers. Thank you for hanging out. Um, yeah, Patreon. It's the support platform where I try to make better content and get your uh, uh, maybe better audio levels. Ooh, that was a thing. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's. It's a cool community, it's growing, it's our little niche, um, this corner of the web where we talk since we talk shop, we talk performance, we talk travel, we talk music. It's been so busy over the last week, so I still don't have the winners for the contest, but still um, the new contest, the, um, um, uh, the, the uh, dance carousel that we're doing, that is going to be up uh, end of this week or maybe over the weekend, I'm going to stick it up and it's going to run for I don't know for how long we're going to run it for. So basically, everybody just makes a beat and makes a lead line and makes a um, bass line. And then you'll just give your beat to the next producer who is going to put his lead and his bass on top of that. And then, you know, it just keeps going. And then we get this like uh, really cool production that a lot of people worked on. And if we can make it and morph it into something really cool, I'm even contemplating of releasing it on Kitchen Club Records. Now, that's absolutely cool. Another thing is that I've heard from the designer and the builder that within probably three weeks, I'm not sure if it's going to be a hard three weeks, but probably around that time frame, we're going to look at a physical prototype of that mixer that I've been on about for like forever, which um, to me, it's amazing. Now I'm toying with the idea, do I want to have the master section just there and 
we decide on how many faders we initially want. Um, because of the build and the stuff that I've done in there, it is a hybrid between a studio and a DJ uh, mixer. So you can actually use it in your dollar setup in the studios. Hence, we're looking at like, what is it that you need? Um, and then there's some input transformers as well, so it can be easily used to really do crazy stuff with. Now, uh, mind this space, there's more coming soon. Thank you for watching this video. Now, how to look at these videos? Because sometimes people say like, yeah, I don't get the information. I am not a review channel. I'm not gonna read a manual uh, off camera, turn on the camera and pretend that, like I know what I'm talking about. That's pretty much not what it is. What it is is that I've got a lot of experience. I have done this for quite some time and I'm trying to simplify some um, the difficult topics around like maybe how to set your levels, how to mix in stuff, uh, because there's ways that I've found throughout my journey that are easy uh, for people to understand once you just don't complicate the explanation, right? So if you are uh, mixing in three or four different bass lines in the same frequency, it'll become a tedious thing trying to talk to a sound engineer who's going to explain which frequencies should not clash and, you know, but in the end of the day, it needs to sound right. It needs to sit well and it needs to work on the dance floor because there's not 10,000 sound engineers on the dance floor. That's just people want to have a good time. So if you can make it work, you don't screw up the sound or blow up the sound system, then what the hell is everyone talking about, right? So that's how you should perceive this channel. Analog Kitchen, I'm playing live, I'm putting the sound there and I'm pretty much just trying to just like focus on how do you perform it stuff? How does it sound? And you know, can you get better and bigger sound out of um, out of one punch? You know, can you just hit like uh, two birds with one stone? Okay, enough of that. Well, that's pretty much what it is. So, uh, if you made it this far into the video, you are an absolute superstar. Well, join it up on patreoncom slash Kitchen Was also what I was going to say. There's another link if you want to hear more music, which is on uh, analogkitchen.bandcamp.com. Now, I think that that's pretty much is what it is. Next week, it's going to be another video. If you've got suggestions for topics, something you think you missed, something you saw but want to delve more, uh, more into it, um, just let me know and leave a uh, comment in the section below. Like, share, do all that good stuff. It helps the channel. And you know what I mean? Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching. I'm Animal Kitchen and I'm out. Peace.